Today I'm at Moss HQ in Feltham and it's time to get Phil looking, sounding and performing better than he ever has with a Jackson Racing exhaust manifold and cobalt exhaust system. So the first mod we're going to do is we're going to whip out the old exhaust and we're going to put a whole new stainless exhaust system in. It's going to make the car zing. It's going to probably give me about 50 or 60 horsepower. Not really, I'm hoping for about 5 to 7. Uh, but it's going to look cool, it's going to sound wicked. So let's get cracking, I need to get these gloves on. And then uh, let's go butcher Phil. This is my buddy Gareth, he's, uh, he's helped me out on a lot of cars. We've, um, we've done a lot in university, we broke a lot of stuff. And what? We mainly, we, we mainly broke ourselves. But Gareth's going to be helping out because he's very handy with some tools and he's very patient with me as well. So, first things first, let's get this car into the sky. We've got this all on right, yeah? So this is obviously the first time that I've had a proper look underneath. Uh, there's quite a lot of rust, pretty much everywhere I look. This cat looks like it's hit the ground a few times because it's just uh, just a big hole, really. Uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised under here. Oh, sugar. So we've got oh, quite a lot of rust going on there. <laughs> uh, yeah. That'll be right. But today is not about fixing holes. It's about yeah, it's fixing getting, It's getting on cool stuff. All right. Actually, what we should do first is penetrate oil that exhaust Manifold. So we need to get the car back down. Yes. Spray it with loads of penetrating oil. Yeah, we have to penetrate it. We need to penetrate this. Yeah. Uh, so as much fun as the car, it is getting the car up, we're going to now put it down. Right, so before we're going to put the exhaust on, what needs to happen under the bonnet? I reckon I'll take the filter box out so we can have a bit more space. Yeah. And then from there on, take this heat shield off. Yeah. And lube up all the bolts for the exhaust manifold. First things first, I'm going to open up this Studi Professional Tools box. Oh, that's a good socket set. So a little tip when you're doing anything to your car is to have a pot, pull like this, and then chuck all your nuts and bolts in, that way you don't lose anything. And that way at the end of the day, you don't have five missing bolts and you think, damn, do I need those? Now nah, it'd be fine and then something falls off and then you've had a bad time. So, put on the engine, job's a good one. To start, we need to get the airbox off to give us better access to the heat shield and exhaust manifold. Get it out of the way. Oh, look at that. That has, that's seen quite a few miles. To give us more light in the engine bay, we whip off the super light bonnet, making sure we unclip the washer hose first. The main, the main problem with that is that heat shield will obviously not fit on that, so we need to get that wrapped. Unless ah, you want loads of heat in your engine bay, which is No, not, not particularly. Especially because the heat's probably going to blow off onto, yeah, pretty much everything. Okay, and mm. that's bad, right? Yeah, it's not great. Okay. Yeah, ideally you want to keep in there vaguely cool. Yeah. Because then plastics just start getting really brittle. Right, so I think there's probably one more bolt there. There's one underneath. Um, or, what happens if I pull it really hard? I think it will just bend. There you go. One that's heat not, shield, that's gone. Not a bad stock manifold, is it? That's flowed pretty well. You can see the exhaust manifold there. Uh, we're going to whip that off, but before we do that, we're going to spray it with GT85. So how quickly can you get to work? Do you need to let it sit for a while? Yeah, I was thinking of actually pulling off the exhaust system first and then we will take this off. So we need to jack up the car in that case? Yeah, let me get that lambda. That lambda needs to come out as well. So okay, we so what, what's, why, why do we need to get rid of the lambda and what yeah. does it do? The lambda measures the oxygen content coming out of the exhaust yeah. system. So it's part of the sort of, um, what do you call it, emissions. Okay. So that'll tell the ECU how much oxygen's in there and then adjust the fuel mixture. Yeah, so the Lambda is just that bit there. Yeah. Removing the Lambda sensor proves to be a massive pain in the arse because access to it is extremely limited. 
and uh, there it is. This is the lambda sensor. It's, uh, it's been the biggest pain in the ass to get off, but uh, it's done. So now the real work begins. The next job is then to lift the car back up and then we're gonna drop the exhaust from underneath and then we're gonna drop the car back down and then take this bad boy off. Okay, so now we're underneath the car, we can see the exhaust in its entirety. These bolts here, they prove to be absolute bastards. Uh, if they're too much work to get off, then we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun with some sparks. So what bolts do we need to undo here? We've so got- there's, there's three bolts that hold this downpipe. So these three bolts come off there. All right, let's uh, try this 13 out. I'm on my tiptoes. Yeah, this is uh, this is where I've run out of height. A little bit embarrassing. Uh, battery. Think I can sound on the battery? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Now I am of height. I feel like Ed China now. Oh, tea, it's tea time. Huh? Me. Oh, thanks man. Oh, tea will make everything better. Now we're unscrewing the exhaust from underneath the car. Because I failed to get tall as a kid, I wasn't much use for this part, so I left it up to Gareth. We're taking the exhaust apart bit by bit. First is the downpipe between the manifold and cat, then we take off the cat, and then the original back box comes off before we'll get the car back on the ground and take the exhaust manifold off from above. Meanwhile, I decided it's a good idea to heat wrap the new exhaust manifold, which is a job I've promised to do only once in my life. Seriously, being trapped naked in the boot of the MX-5 with Ethan would have been more fun. Right, so we are just getting off the old exhaust pipe. As you can see, it's, uh, it's not the prettiest old thing. Uh, and now the new exhaust pipe goes on. We're now putting the car back down to remove the old manifold and install the new one. Exhaust manifold, last little bolts come off. Oh, that's a good feeling. Done. Put that over there. And uh, we're gonna replace this with the uh, new stainless uh, exhaust manifold that uh, we've wrapped, uh, heat wrapped. So hopefully this should just... Come on. Oh, that's pretty heavy. That's pretty damn heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as you can see, that's done with. Now we're gonna chuck that in the bin and then replace this with a lovely new one. Right, I'm just going to put a bit of copper grease on these so that the bolts go on nice and easy when we're doing this back up again. We don't want anything to hitch. This is a new stainless exhaust manifold. It smells like victory and it's been completely heat wrapped. This took, uh, this took us about two hours. Um, and the idea behind heat wrapping is that it just wraps all the heat inside so no heat escapes. So you get less heat in the cabin which just means that your life is a lot easier. Um, but yeah, if you've got this stuff, I advise you do it. I advise you very patient though. Um, and it looks pretty cool as well. Let's get this inside. <laughs> oh. <sighs> right, cool. Oh. oh nice. Right. That's it. Put the bolts back on using trusty copper grease and make sure you torque them up properly. I've just done some googling and I've looked up the uh, torque setting for the uh, exhaust manifold bolts. Uh, 38 to 46 newton meters. You should hear a click when it's ready. There you go. The new exhaust manifold is on. Now we need to go back underneath the car and whip in the new system. This should only take about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I say 10 minutes, but it's gonna take a lot longer than that. Uh, the first thing we need to whip on is this old cat. As you can see, it's, uh, it's had quite a hard life. It's had quite a few scrapes and bumps, but uh, we're gonna chuck that on. That goes in there. And then the back section goes on. And that's when the beauty starts. So when you're putting on a new gasket onto anything, um, at the moment it's gonna go back onto this old cat. It's always really good practice to take a wire brush and get rid of all the uh, surface rust. That way with the new gasket on it sits nice and flush. You don't lose any of the exhaust gases. The world is happy.
Ghost. Just as a comparison, this, oh, so heavy, so strong, is the old exhaust. Uh, it looks pretty manky. Again, this is gonna go in the skip. And this is a brand new Cobalt exhaust. As you can see, the diameter is a lot bigger. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like that, let's not scratch that. Uh, but this is gonna, this is just gonna zing. It's gonna look a lot better and it's gonna sound wicked. Is the back box. And last but not least, do not forget to tighten everything up because in the excitement, uh, like me, you'll probably just want to get the car down and get revving and get driving. But uh, yeah, tighten those bad boys up. Look at that. Don't fist my exhaust. <laughs> Look at it. Look how pretty that looks. This is a sweet ass. New exhaust manifold is a four to two to one uh, exhaust manifold. The other one was a four to one, which is more restrictive for airflow. Uh, we have had to use the old cat, but I will get that replaced with a racing cat at some point. The midsection is beautiful polished stainless steel, and it's not hitting any of these uh, support beams or anything, which is good news. And the back box, the piece de resistance is this back box. It looks absolutely stunning. And it's sitting really, really nicely in the bumper. I cannot wait. Ugh, I can't wait to get this bad boy revving. Phil, Phil is looking really good. And this is day one of the build. So I can't wait for three months time. My phone's ringing. My mum's probably excited about this. Finally, we put the Lambda sensor back in, drop the car back down and put the original air box back. Now it's time to test. The moment of truth. Oh. Ready? Oh! Wait, wait, it'll go. It'll stop. There you go. There you go. No, no, no. It's happy. It's happy. He's saying, yeah! <laughs> right, right, right. Oh! Oh! oh. It's got a proper stainless sink to it. Oh! Wow! Oh, do it again, do it again. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Phil, I'm not gonna hug you because Phil over there, look at Phil, Ethan. He has spent a good two and a half hours polishing all of this. I don't know if you remember, but that was all pink um, and it looks absolutely insane. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Phil. <coughs> yeah, you're right, Ethan. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex, for buying this car, for making all of this happen. I'll take a bow to myself. Ethan, you can go home now. Bye. Yeah, bye. So there you have it. One heat wrap Jackson Racing exhaust manifold and cobalt exhaust system done. So um, we're going to do a rev off in a sec. Uh, let me know which one sounds better. Stay tuned for the next episode where this crappy old airbox is going to be replaced by this lovely shiny new Jackson Racing airbox. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to go with it. Uh, it's going to give the car a much better sound. It's going to give it more airflow and probably another 10 horsepower. That's what I'm hoping for, but I'll be happy with three.